Hey there, folks. I am coming to you live. I wanted to talk about the current market in Rhode Island, and I'm excited to have my business partner, David Brooke, with me. Uh, David, thanks for joining me today. Always I'm, excited to have you. I am very happy to be on uh, a Facebook Live with you. This is, uh, I think, uh, one of the cool times of year that we get to relay great information to people. They have tons of questions and we're getting questions all over the country and you're dominating uh, in just a really great way in Rhode Island. So I'm excited to talk national and local Rhode Island with you. So uh, what's been happening lately in Rhode Island? What's going on? Yeah, it's been fun to see all of the folks that I know you and I pay attention to a lot of people on the national scene. And everything that's happening nationally is happening right here in Rhode Island as well. I mean, I've had buyer showings, new buyer clients showing up. Uh, in my email feed, generally a couple every week. So it's been, it you know, the market turned on a dime, I would say in about June, but it's also turned on a dime again at the end of January. So it's been really interesting. Everybody was very doom and gloom. Oh, the market's going to crash. Oh, there's not going to be anything happening this year. Real estate agents are going to be leaving the market. Well, that might be true for, for some folks or in some areas, but it, it definitely isn't true here. So we've seen a lot of people at open houses, We've got multiple offers. I had offers that were due today on a property and there are multiple offers. So we're kicking back into a very early spring market. Yeah, it's really interesting to see what's happening. And I think, you know, it's thank you to all who are joining us for this presentation. I think it's going to be helpful to see what's happening um, just across the board in the market right now. We've got a couple of, uh, you know, slides that we can we can share and everything. I'm going to kind of get up. Oh, David, where did you go? <laughs> well, I just want to, there you are. why don't you tell people kind of out, you know, what's happening in the market right now, just based upon, uh, you know, just a little bit of your sales experience. Uh, I'm going to kind of pull this up. So you're more front and center here. So go ahead and why don't you talk that through? All right. I put together a market report uh, for my clients. Um, I had a first time home buyer workshop. I wanted people to be able to see that as well. And there's a couple metrics that I look at that are really important. So first we've got our median sale price that I want to go through and then our housing inventory and months on, on inventory. So let's, let's jump into this file real quick that I pulled together. What's really interesting for me is to look back when I started in real estate, that was back in 2014, our median sale price was 214 and we have jumped all the way up to 400. Uh, as our median sale price. This is specifically for single families. If we looked at the multi uh, multi-family market right now, that's at about 430. Uh, what is also interesting about this is that we capped at our sale price, our median sale price in April through June. And I think we'll see that again this year where we have, you know, we're going to keep building up as we've got multiple offers on properties that's going to push the property's values up. And so we will probably get to about 420 again this year as our cap. It'll be interesting to see if that goes down. It was completely led by interest rates. That's the reason things changed so, so drastically this year. Uh, if we hover at about, you know, six and a half to five, we might not see that decline. So we may actually see our uh, 2023 ending closer to that 420 mark. So that's been a really interesting metric. David, have you seen similar things in the Connecticut market where you are? Yeah, what we're seeing right now, I mean, just in the Connecticut market is, is realistically just a massive decline in housing inventory. And the way that I'm describing it and what's really happening, and you might be watching this webinar and thinking like, you know, what, I'd love to sell my house, but really, I don't know where I could go. Um, that's a really common response. The other question that we're getting nationally is, you know, it, it seemed like a really good time to buy last year, um, middle of the year. And then all of a sudden interest rates kind of shifted and the, and the monthly payment isn't what I really want. And so what do I do about that? Um, and so a number of loan programs have really surfaced and it's taken a little while for that information to really reach the public. And I'm glad, Jess, that you're doing this. So I, I know we're going to talk a little bit about mortgage rates, et cetera. But in Connecticut, it's almost like you've got this uh, this this wedding uh, that's happening and, you know, great music. And then, you know, a song plays that no one really is like kind of into and you kind of get off the dance floor. Then another song that you play likes. And that's kind of like right now, like everyone's like, I kind of want to get back on the dance floor, but you don't want to be the first person in order to do that. 
And so that's really kind of what's happening. And so there's a lot of people who are just in that education stage. But one of the biggest things that I think we can do, Jess, is just kind of, and if you don't mind, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit about why the predicament that we've been in with the lack of, of housing supply. Because if we if we understand that a little bit better, then we're we've got a good chance of understanding, you know what, I think it is a good time or not a good time to jump into the market. And so um, probably the best thing I can do is kind of jump over here and show this, um, show this slide. I don't know if you could still hear me um, if I do this, but Jess, we're going to drop you off real quick here for a second. Um, if we're looking at the market right now, um, the biggest change is we've got these huge increase to building supplies that's happening. And, um, and, and the reason that that's a really a big deal right now is actually because um, it's costing builders a lot more to build houses right now. And the reason is, is that after 2008 with the housing crash, we had a huge problem because a lot of builders kind of went belly up. They didn't sell a lot of houses. And then so they started to shift and we're actually in a housing shortage. So we don't have enough housing. And uh, uh, Jess can speak more accurately to what's happening specifically in Rhode Island. But um, if we don't have enough houses, then that means that the prices of the existing houses are going to go up. So can you build your way out of this uh, problem? Yes, you can. The issue is, is that it actually costs quite a lot in order to build a home. And those uh, building material increases, if you can look at the chart there in 2021, they increased about 18.9%. And then they increased again another 8%. Uh, last year in 2022. And so if you want to build a home, uh, it's it, it, we could certainly help you with that. But the prices, you know, might be a little bit shocking compared to what they have been in years past. And so that's kind of the situation that we're looking at. Um, but but if that's the case, we really want to get back to the place of like, hey, sh is it a good time to buy? Well, it is, but we got to find a place for you to go. So um, hopefully that was helpful, Jess. What do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, we've particularly in Rhode Island, because we're one of the most densely populated states, we don't have very many places for people to build unless some of those zoning laws change. I live in uh, Situate, right on the Coventry Situate line. And, you know, we're also on septic and well out there. So that's another aspect that, that really kind of gets in the way of building. So people aren't inclined to change those zoning laws yet. That might change as prices continue to go up. Um, I've had people that have come to me and said, hey, I want a new construction house. And they end up buying something that was built in 2017 to 2020 because yeah. they realize actually it's a lot cheaper and a lot more affordable to be able to get into a house that has already been built. So I uh, mm. would love to see new construction. And there certainly are some, but they are really, uh, you know, you've got to be in about 800,000 plus in that market to be able to be able to buy a new house in Rhode Island. Well, what's, uh, you know, we should also talk about, you know, some of the other uh, factors that are going in. And that's what we're going to walk through in this presentation is really just like, what are all the factors that are going into this housing market? What's our outlook like? And I know a lot of uh, people across the country are considering like, should I just keep renting? And, uh, and that's been a big consideration. You actually own your own rental properties. I own my own rental properties. What's it been like for you recently? Just because, you know, I, I was, you know, Rents have been going up. Let's just put it that way because everything right. else is going up. So what's it been like for you and looking at that? Yeah, I sold a property last year that I now really wish I hadn't I hadn't sold uh, because at the time it was just a two family and the rental numbers didn't really make sense for me not to be owner occupied. But that was because rental prices were lower than uh, that place where I was getting eighteen hundred probably would be getting twenty eight hundred. And I had I known that, uh, you know, and even as a real estate agent. We learn new things all the time. Another property that I have, I bought it in 2017. When I bought that, my rental income was 1500. I thought that was great. I had a tenant that left uh, last month and I'm now getting 2200. I actually could have gotten probably 2500, but it it felt kind of it just didn't feel good to me uh, to to get that that price. I you know tend to be a bleeding heart a little bit. So, so rents have really gotten, uh, gone up. I've got people reaching out to me all the time that are saying, you know, I want to be able to find something that's 1500. That's getting harder and harder. Our average rental in Providence is 1800 and we're going to see that at 2000. We've really, as more people from Boston and other places have come out, I'm sure all of the people that are in my feed, uh, that rent can really speak to how difficult that is. 
Well, let me just like kind of dive into that for a second. I, I showed on the screen uh, for this presentation. So whether you're watching this live or in one of our webinars here, I'm going to go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll put Jess on the back burner here for a second. I'm going to show um, here's actually from apartments.com. So go ahead and fact check us at any point in time. I love that. Um, this is actually fr the, the rental uh, data from apartments.com. And uh, apartments.com is really showing us if you look in purple, that's going to be a rental increase. And if you look in blue, that's a rental decrease. And just realize here, that's a really good sign that we've recently had a little bit of a cool that's happened over the last couple of months. But man, that's going to be really difficult to kind of uh, you know get away from the average uh, increasing that that's happened. And if you want to break these numbers down for yourself, it's been, and these are by month increases. Okay. So as you continue to read, this isn't like a 1%, 2% increase, like overall, this is per month. And so if you start to add it all up and you want to go to apartments.com and go ahead and read this report, we saw a, uh, this is, this is absolutely wild. We saw over 20% increase in rental rates that happened over the last two years. It's absolutely wild. And it was 3.8% in the last year. If you just, you know, net all of the positives and some of the cool out by the end of the year. So you just have to ask yourself at this point, and, you know, I'll, uh, I'll bring Jess right, right back in here for a second. You know, if we, if we do that, if we look at all this, you, you start to ask yourself the question, you know, is it a good time in order to, to buy or rent? And you're looking at these rental rates that, yeah, right now it's, you know, it, it got to a cool, it's trying to find another equilibrium, but our mortgage payments aren't increasing by 17% in a year. They're not increasing that significantly. And in fact, uh, or, you know, with zero equity or ownership in it, um, the question of, is it a good investment in order to still buy a home? The, the answer is absolutely. I mean, I, I would say unequivocally, yes, uh, because you can see this, um, these rental rates beginning to increase and increase. And here's the thing is, is, is renters are paying someone's mortgage. It's just not their own. You know, the only thing that's added to it is the, you know, the entrepreneurial incentive of the landlord. So, and you could probably speak to that more, Jess. What are people seeing in Rhode Island for rents? I mean, we've got a housing sh shortage everywhere. So I work with a lot of people, a lot of buyers that want to buy multifamily properties. That's how I got my start that's what I, I love working with people that that are interested in buying multifamilies because it can be a really smart way to to be able to be in a neighborhood that maybe you otherwise couldn't be in or to be able to offset your living expenses. Um, so a lot of times people will say, well, where are the areas that I should where, you know, where will I get good rents? And the fact is, it's really anywhere in Rhode Island at this point. It really is. Where does where you want to live line up? You know, your your rental income is going to be adjusted slightly depending upon where you are. But there is such a shortage of housing there. You will put a rental up and you will get 20 people within the first hour that reach out to you. Yeah, let's so, go ahead and look, look back on some of the stats that you had in one of your presentations here. I'm going to drop off the screen and um, let's let's get that back because I think you had more data in Rhode Island that you, you really wanted to share there. So I'm going to go ahead and just pop out here for a second. Yeah, I think it's it's really it's great to look at. We talk a lot about inventory. Uh, what does that really mean? Well, that's the a number of available houses that we have uh, to be able to that are for sale. So if you look back at you know, over the past three years, it, you know, it's also interesting to look at how that changes each month, but we've got a little more than 16. We've got about 1700 properties. And when I looked this morning that are actually available for sale right now in Rhode Island for single family homes. Well, in 2018, which was already considered a low inventory year, we were at double that. So that really illustrates what the issue is. We don't have enough houses for sale and there isn't you know, what will be the driving factor that suddenly we would all of a sudden have all of these new listings? You know, when people talk about a market crash, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what this is where I like to take them. Well, let's look at what happened back in 2013. Uh, so I just went back 10 years. We'll look at what our inventory was back then. And this is when we were in a clear, you know, we were in a buyer's market because we simply, this is the year that I started where we were starting, you know, it starts to get lower and lower in that inventory so that, you know, we would be love to go back to these days because buyers would have tons of choices. The fact is we're right here and this is where we're going to stay for quite a long time until something happens, whether that's we have new builds, we change zoning laws, uh, or, you know, whatever people decide they don't want to buy anymore. 
uh, this is where we're most likely to hover for the next several years. I would say at least the next five years and who knows what happens after that. I would assume, David, that you see very similar in uh, Connecticut. Yeah, I mean, I am definitely seeing very similar uh, in Connecticut for us. It's just the new builds are unable to catch up with uh, with the current demand. And so if you're a seller, what you want to know is, are there still going to be buyers? That's what you truly want to know. Are there going to be buyers? And the answer is yes, simply because we have a shortage of them. Now, we're, I'm going to get to a prediction that's going on. Uh, that, that I have and that Jess, I don't know, I'd love to get your opinions on it on how I believe that demand is actually going to be present for quite some time here. Um, and that other, uh, you know, there's going to be other factors that are going to appear to cool what's going on, but it's not going to cool it to the extreme that we need because housing as a whole is an actual fundamental human need. Like we need this housing. And if your family is growing and you have another child or for, you know, instance, even in a negative circumstance, if there's a divorce and you need to separate, you're not going to still remain within the same house or your family just, isn't just going to build more bunk beds, right? Like at some point we do need to move and it's because it's a human need, we're going to face and develop products in order to either make housing more affordable or find some way to do that. And that's probably one of the best ways we can kind of like lead in and start to talk about what's happening with mortgages. And one of the things that uh, is, is big on the um, on everyone's horizon right now is the fact that um, that we've got um, we've got inflation as our, our big one. And so I'm going to go ahead and just move this real quick. Um, this inflation chart is absolutely like just it's important because right now you've got inflation showing at about six percent um, and change. And it's coming down from like the upper eights um, where inflation and nines where inflation was increasing every single year. And that's that's a super issue. Um, because it's causing every household from like the gasoline that you put in your tank to uh, uh, the eggs that you buy at the grocery store, which recently are just absolutely atrocious. And what relates directly to that inflation is actually mortgages. And what we're going to do is just take a look at those mortgage rates. And the mortgage rates right now, if you can see this on this chart, are starting to dip, which is like actually a good point. And the reason that they're dipping is because if we look at those uh, real closely, when the mortgage rates begin to dip, now since buyers start to come back into the process, and right now you can really lock in at around just a, just over about 6% for your national interest rate. Now that doesn't mean that you can't get into the fives. Um, there's a lot of loan programs that I'm going to have, uh, you know, I'm going to ask Jess if you could probably comment a little bit more on these, something that, you know, maybe some loan programs that are even intrinsic to Rhode Island that's out there. Or you see a lot of your buyers taking advantage of, but buyers are taking advantage of temporary rate buy downs, not so much permanent rate buy downs, and they're getting rates into the threes. That's right. I said that. So if you're listening on this webinar, rates in the threes are actually possible. And Jess can get into that a little bit more. But as uh, inflation starts to get more under control, which they are through this increase in interest rates, the increase in interest rates actually takes down the inflation. And if you take down the inflation, you can actually get lower uh, mortgage rates. So that's a huge misnomer that's that's in the business right now is like, oh my gosh, they're increasing interest rates. That's why you know my mortgage interest rate is actually through the roof. Well, what they increase is short-term interest rates. And so that kind of precipitates down over to mortgages, but that's the more clear thing. So if you're a buyer in the market and you think to yourself, well, my monthly payment's going to be different than it was, you know, several months ago, you know what, you're probably right. And you're also probably missing an opportunity. And so Jess, if you kind of want to talk a little bit about um, what's happening with, with mortgages and what you're seeing, uh, let's just go there now. Yeah, I think actually Fannie Mae just came out with uh, a way to combat affordability issues uh, that uh, if you meet a certain income qualification, you can actually, they will lower your interest rates. So that's been really amazing that just came out just recently. I had a couple lenders of my lenders that, that sent me info about that. Uh, Rhode Island Housing also just came out with a program and incentive for buyers here in Rhode Island. Uh, it's federal funds. They got $30 million. Uh, and that is going to be translated to 17,000 towards a down payment for buyers Whoa. for a single unit up to a four unit property. So again, you have to meet wow. certain income guidelines, but those are, those are really great programs that just got announced. The Rhode Island housing just got announced last week. So we're always staying on top of what's happening. All of the lenders that I have are fantastic about being able to say, okay, 
let's really look at what you have, what your, what your, you know, what your assets are, what your debt is, and let's find the best program that's going to work for you. Because at the end of the day, it's a numbers program. Every video, every blog, every conversation that I have with people is the right time to buy is when the numbers make sense for you. So if it makes sense for you to keep renting, then by all means, keep renting. However, if you think that you might want to buy a house, let's put a plan in place. Let's look at the numbers that will determine what you're able to do. And let's find the programs that make it, you know, more possible for you rather than just making assumptions. I, I can't, I mean, if there is a partner that I could have in real estate that just clearly articulates opportunity, Jess, you nail it because right now buyers are still thinking to themselves, you know what? I missed my window. You know, I could have bought a house when it was a little bit cheaper and now I'm seeing the house oh, is yeah. way up. I, I have people that were saying that five years ago. They were waiting I, for like the perfect market timing. And now they look back and they're like, ah, you know, I wish I had been able to, you know, buy four or five properties over even last year. I'm in the market to buy real estate still. All of the real estate agents that I know and investors that I know, they're in the market to buy. It's just a matter of when does the right property, when the numbers line up. But I'm always I'm always in the market to buy real estate because I know awesome. I know that's what's make the difference in my life. Uh, and, you know, that's what's going to make the difference in my kid's life. Well, I think what's cool is like you get to talk to industry professionals inside each specific uh, industry. If you talk to the financial planners, you're like, hey, isn't it a bad time in the stock market right now? And that's because we generally we read headlines and we kind of like get our news just from the headline without even actually reading the article. And right. like think of how separated that is from the actual source of the data and what's going on. And what I love about this presentation here is we get to actually like look at the data for what's happening. Uh, one of the stats that I, you know, what we didn't pull that for this one um, is the delinquency rate. So some people are <clears throat> who are the doom gloom guys. They're like, hey, you know, the market could crash because we're getting people who are delinquent. Yes, there are some in indications that some delinquencies um, are on the table. But the good news is, is that in October of 2021, right? Note this down, 3.8% of loans were in delinquency, but that dropped to the following October of 2.8% of loans in delinquency. So as much as people are trying to make it doom and gloom, I'm telling you, it is headline clickbait. But when you go directly to the source of what's happening in real estate, whether that's nationally, and I'm talking about that, or that's like, I'm your Rhode Island queen, and that's just powers, like, it is still very much a good time to buy and sell. So what, what, what are, what's going to happen? What's, you know, some of our predictions for next year, uh, Jess, I'd love if I could just share a little bit about some of the demographics that I'm seeing happening. And then we can kind of get into, you know, some of the, what I'd love for you to do is kind of talk about the, um, the cool opportunities that you have uh, for people who are in uh, uh, certain situations here that you do a really good job. So this is actually a demographic chart. Um, I'm going to keep Jess on the feed here. So this is a demographic chart showing um, Gen Z, the millennials, Gen X, baby boomer, silent gen, and greatest generation. What a name too, right? The greatest generation. Like how bold do you have to be to be like, I, I am the greatest. Anyways, long story short is our baby boomers, if you take a look at this, they are hitting a wave right now. This is in uh, this is 2020 data. So we're, we're a little bit further here. We are hitting that peak retirement time, absolute peak requirement time. And why is that like really relevant right now? Well, it's really relevant because as individuals head towards that retirement age, what they're actually doing here is they're saying, I need to actually downsize my property. And uh, I was looking at some of the stats that were out by um, uh, uh, some of the Congress um, uh, data. And what I was reviewing there is that it was one of the biggest years for for um, for retirement uh, just last year in 2022. And so if we extrapolate some of that data, we're going to start to see a massive wave of individuals as they've been impacted by inflation, <clears throat> looking to save money and really looking for opportunity to find more affordable options out there to begin to downsize from some of their larger homes that they might have to more affordable, manageable properties as we're going to start to see taxes begin to increase and why taxes are starting to increase. Well, I'll tell you why. It's simply because if you increase um, anything here on the chart, if you increase your prices of what real estate is worth, guess what's completely related to that? Your taxes. 
And if your taxes increase on there, man, if you're on a fixed income, do you think that you really want to start messing around with higher taxes on a 3,000 square foot property? Absolutely not. And so we've really got an opportunity here where there's big waves in the demographics that are starting to uh, that are starting to hit. Now, what, what I'd also love to do is just kind of jump over um, back to this chart and, and look at another wave of individuals. And this wave is your favorite wave. Um, I'm in this group. Uh, this is the millennials group. And uh, that wave is also hitting right here. So you got to push this a couple of years out right here uh, from some of this data. At, at 2020, but ready? It's that 32, 33 year olds are happening right now. Now, Core Logic, I don't have this uh, to show you right now, but Core Logic just came out with an article, and uh, and I just commented on it um, recently um, in another article, and it just basically referenced the fact that around over 50 percent of home buyers last year were millennials. Over 50 percent. Right. I mean, just uh, what is your home buyer situation? Didn't you just run a home buyer seminar? And it was something yeah. you know very similar to that similar demographic. Yeah, we had 17 people that showed up, which was great. I mean, that that is indicative of where I think the spring market is going. Um, you know, now that interest rates have settled, you know, they they realize this is where we're at. Uh, so we better figure out and make a plan. Um, and so, and and that's my you know that's my when I look at my client base, that's the that's well over 50 percent. I probably am about 75 percent millennials. Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's they're they're ready to go, and they actually feel like they're a little bit behind, uh, and so they're you know they're ready to jump in. They've been saving their money. They've got their you know they've paid down their student debt. Um, a lot of them are able to work remotely, which is opening up more opportunities to buy in different places. Which is why I've got a lot of people that come down from Boston. Uh, you know they're priced out of the Boston market. Rhode Island looks really affordable comparatively. Yeah, let's let's chat a little bit about that, Jess. So let's jump and talk about those mortgage options that your millennial buyers are taking advantage of right now. And then, uh, you know, go from there. Well, they realize that they don't have to have 20 percent to put down. Uh, you don't? So most, you don't. It's amazing. Who puts 20 percent down? Uh, no. I mean, if you know, if you can, great. But that's not the barrier for entrance anymore. That ended in the 80s. So, you know, a lot of people on average put down between three and five percent down on a home. So, you know, anywhere from if you've got 15 to twenty five thousand dollars in savings, that's an easy way to be able to say, oh, OK, I'm probably ready to be looking at homes. Um, and now with some of the down payment assistance that, that might be available to people, that's just going to help them even more. Yeah. So let's uh, talk that through. What should people do right now if they're like, oh, you know what? I didn't know what my monthly could be. What, what's a first step for you? Do you do discovery calls? Um, do you do coffee meets? What's the way that like, all right, OK, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not sure if I thought it was a bad time to buy. My uncle told me to wait a couple of years. But you know what? I just kind of want to figure this out. Like I'm not committing to buy a house, but I just really want to kind of like dip my foot in the water. Can we get a little bit more info? What's the, what's probably the best yeah, I way? Would that tell people, yeah. Start with a real estate agent because your real estate agent has all of the other industry professionals that they've already vetted. So you don't have to go down the internet rabbit hole to find a lender. You know, I've got the lenders that are going to best be, you know, that are going to line up with who you are and what you're looking for. So, and I tell people, you really should start planning a year in advance. So I actually prefer it when people come to me and say, you know what, I'm probably not ready to buy, but I want to be able to start to learn about the process and I want to be able to know what's happening. So great. That means you're, you're smart. You're, you're really going to be able to focus and figure out what the right move for you is. You're going to be much more informed because you're not rushing through the process. It's a lot to take on. So I jump on a call with people. I, I typically, I love zoom. I meet with people uh, face to face, but I think we're, you know, we're, we're used to this sort of digital world that, that is, yeah. uh, that, that has happened since it, it does make it a little bit easier, right? You can just kind of jump yeah. on and be like, all right, listen, I got yeah. like five minutes here in between. I'm like, I'm in between work or whatever. Can we just jump on a quick call? Like, tell me, am I out of my mind? I've got, you know, I've got X in the bank. I, you know, can I, can I afford a house? It's like this. I find that those kind of are the conversations that I love the best. It's like, you know, when you go to your accountant and you're just starting out, you're like, I got a shoebox worth of receipts. What can I do with it? Like what's going right. on with this? 
you don't have to come fully prepared. Like, man, I ran my full financial budget on this. It's more or less like, okay, here's what's in the market. This is what you have for a down payment. Let's just have a quick chat about this. And here's what could be reasonable for you. And let's chat. What would that be like, whether this year or into next? So that's really cool. Let's talk a little bit more though, because there is a huge opportunity for like sellers in the market right now, not only to like sell, but like, then how do I find a house that's like, it's not listed yet. Obviously yeah. you have to have found some of these like solutions in your market. Yeah. I mean, I've got a buyer client under contract right now for a house in Barrington and the sellers used a reverse contingency what is that? Uh, that's where they said, you know what? We know that we're moving. The seller actually has a new job in Connecticut, as a matter of fact. Uh, and so they wanted to get their house under under contract, but they're not willing to close until they've found another property. So we're actually in our contract have stated that the sellers have to find a property by May that's under contract. Well, and my clients, housing. Yeah. Yeah. And my clients were super smart right now because they knew that it was an opportunity. We didn't have to get into a bidding war with people. They were actually able to get, we already had the inspections, had a couple repair requests. So they knew it was a unique opportunity if they had waited. And we talked about this. Sure. You guys could keep waiting. We could keep looking for another house. Chances are though, if you know, what if we don't find anything until April or May, that house probably would be higher priced by then. Uh, so they were willing to wait. They've got a rental in place. Uh, so there's lots of buyers like that that are willing to give time for a seller to be able to wait. Or maybe a seller would want to say, hey, I'm going to stay in my house. I want to close, but I want to stay in my house for another two or three months. We call that a lease back option. Uh, and that's something that a lot of buyers are willing to do as well, because, again, there's such a shortage of houses that are available. We can come up with solutions. There's you know, I usually will say, hey, we've got three or four different opportunities and options. What works best for you? Or maybe there's a couple different scenarios, depending on the buyer, that we can work out with their buyer's agent. Uh, but the point being, you know, you shouldn't just wait. You know, you don't just stay in your house because you think it's just not an option. Yeah. I find that all the time. People are like, well, you know, I just, you know, I can't find a place to go. And I believe, you know, skill is showing how sharp that part of the blade is right now. If it, it felt like you could be a really dull agent last year and the year before, and you could still sell houses. And, um, you know, it did, it did no service for us as real estate agents because people would generally comment, wow, this thing's going to go in 48 hours. Like, you had right. to do a whole lot of hard work. And you know what? There's going to be, there's going to be markets like that. There's also going to be markets which are tran transitional right. and transistory. And we're in one of those transistory markets right now where skill is actually showing how sharp it is. And, uh, and the disparity in between the skilled and unskilled is going to be more recognized now than ever before. And what I'm finding is, is that the broker, what the broker was of value for many, many years ago is starting to come back. And that was, I had great relationships with others in the industry and I brokered transactions because I had a great network worth of people. And right now the skill isn't, I put your house on the market and I sold it for top dollar. The skill is truly, I navigated you from not only A to B to C, but also I got you all the way through. And we were able to find some options that may not have been available directly on the market. And we knew stuff like that's the sort of cutting edge that we're seeing a lot of these top brokers like yourself, uh, exemplify. And so one of the things that like, I know, you know, do you have, you, I believe you have a buyer's guide that you work with or a seller's guide. You want to talk a little bit more about that. So how we can get started um, if we're interested yeah. In, in that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I created a whole library to help people because everybody learns in different ways. So, you know, I put out a presentation. If, if you like something, if you want a PDF that you can print, I've got that. It's going to take you through everything. If you like to watch videos, I've got a library of videos for buyers and sellers. If you prefer a blog post, I've got that too. So I've put together a lot of resources. Uh, I'm going to, we're going to attach one of those links for that resource for whether you're a buyer or seller today as well. But I've tried to do everything that I can to be able to make sure when people have great education and are informed, they make better decisions. Yeah. And so that's really where I come from, that place of what can I do to help people through every step of the process? What value can I provide? Well, that's by making sure that we can anticipate everything that you're going to go through and being able to help you because then it's just less stressful. 
It can be such a stressful process if you don't know what comes next. But if you have time to really understand it and learn about it, then you also know what questions you have as a follow-up. Uh, then it, it just makes it a much better process. We, we've got only like a minute or two left. I want to see if there's any questions. So go ahead and just drop your questions if you've got that. We'd love to uh, you know see if we have a minute or two to answer some of those. So if you're watching on webinar here, uh, thanks again for watching. We've got some cool stuff for downloads, but go ahead and drop your comments uh, just right there. Questions. Hey, it could be anything, nothing embarrassing. And I'll have Jess just share a quick story. <laughs> Jess, uh, tell me a little bit, um, uh, some of the hottest markets that are moving right now um, that, you know, you, if you got a call today and said, hey, if you were in one of these towns, um, it, it's, it's definitely a moving market, especially as a seller. I mean, well, I mean, the east side of Providence in particular, there is I've got a couple buyers for the for the east side and there's just nothing. I think, you know, there's probably like nine houses available right now. Um, so really where these inventory pockets are, where it's really, really low, I would say the other aspect is the multifamily market right now. Uh, if you're a seller for a multifamily property uh, and you're ready to you're you're ready to pass that property on, there are lines of buyers that are ready for multifamily properties. But there are definitely some things that need to be put in place in order to sell it smartly. And I keep seeing agents that are making big mistakes. Mm. I'm not going to say them right now. Uh, but I would do things differently in order to be able to maximize that price uh, and also make it a smoother process, not only for the tenants, but also for the buyers and the sellers. Um, I would say another segment of the market, really anywhere in that price range of 285 to 400, because that's where a lot of the buyers are. And, you know, again, there's just not that many houses available in that price range. Uh, going on long, we've got in the comments here, if it's okay, I, I, de I definitely want to get to one and then we'll, I'm sorry, we can't get to all of them today, but we want to make sure that we got at least one comment um, on the board. Um, we've got Margo who asks, are we going to get priced out here in Rhode Island like we did in Boston? So do you see prices increase that quickly? What's, uh, what's your thoughts on that? I think it's going to be a pretty hot spring market. Um, I, I think... I don't think it's going to be as crazy as it was last spring, meaning there were properties that had 18 plus offers. But I think we'll be back into those numbers where most properties, if they're priced appropriately, unless they need a massive amount of work, are probably going to be any see anywhere from four to six offers. So buyers need to really come in with a smart offer strategy and understand what that even means. Like if you're saying what's a smart offer strategy, then you actually don't yeah. know. And that means you need to make sure that you're working with an agent that will say, OK, here's here are our strategies. I always tell my clients, you're the ones driving the bus, but I'm the one that's giving you all of the different options so that we can figure out which was the best way to navigate. And the point is to get to the closing. So the point yeah. is to get your offer accepted. So, I, you know, I think is are you going to be priced out? It completely depends on your perspective. Uh, and where your budget is. It's all about those numbers. Yeah. Well, but Jess, I mean, I, say that again. I said it is going to be a very competitive spring market. It, it is going to be competitive. I know I saw one of the other comments. Is it going to be competitive again? I think people are aware of that right now. I think they're starting to get the sense mortgage applications are ticking up. You know, right now, you know, what, what I'm telling people across the country is you basically have a window from right now. Here's your, here's your, uh, your, your prep time. This is homework. Uh, it's now until basically Super Bowl. And, uh, and and once Super Bowl hits, I mean, it's every realtor who I help coach across the country is going like this. My phone's blowing up. My phone's blowing up right on Super Bowl Sunday. And the reason is everyone gets together and has a conversation. Hey, what are you guys doing this year? What's happening? And it's in between on the commercials. You laugh, but then you talk about real estate. And, yeah. uh, and that's what people are seven houses on Super Bowl. You have? No, I will. Be. That's what I'll be doing on Super Bowl oh, Sunday. Yeah. Well, I'll be showing houses. Well, this is, this is your agent then. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll, I'll be sitting eating meatballs at some point. <laughs> but regardless, what I'm seeing across the country is this. Smart buyers, smart sellers are taking the time to do the homework right now until February 15-ish. And they're really taking that time to like get the conversation going. That doesn't mean you have to have your house ready. That just means that you have to have that conversation initial one. So if that's you, please drop in a comment below. We've got a couple of... Uh, Three bits of content that I know Jess has put together for you. Uh, best way, Jess, people should reach out. We, you know, email obviously. Um, anything else they should, they should do? Hit hit your website. 
Check out yeah, social. My, website, uh, my socials, it's all Just Powers Real Estate. So justpowersrealestate.com or Instagram, uh, you know, or, you know, my number's out there. Call me. I like, I, I answer my phone. So. <laughs> well, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me on with you. Yeah. Thanks, David. I appreciate it. Cool. All right. Talk to you later. See you, Jess. Thanks again. Bye.